We're back for your ears only. I'm Mark Garber. I'm David Alpern with this quote from the news. Brutality that stands in stark contrast to our values as a nation. That was California Democrat Dianne Feinstein, chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, after it voted to have the White House declassify a report on CIA detention and interrogation practices that Amnesty International has called torture and violation of international law. The report says CIA repeatedly exaggerated the program's benefits. Now this. This was tough, but I'm going to go with the Big Ten. I've got Michigan State going all the way. He drives that ball deep to right, and the ball game is over. And Neil Walker gives the Pirates a 1-0 win. Well, sports fans, President Obama's bracket was most clearly busted when Michigan State lost to UConn 60-54 as the NCAA's March Madness wound down or built up to the Final Four, which overlapped the restart of Major League Baseball, including Pittsburgh's one nothing win over Chicago on opening day. With all that excitement on the boards and on the field, what better time to consider a new book about competition in sports, business, diplomacy, and life in general. It's Top Dog, The Science of Winning and Losing by Poe Bronson and Ashley Merriman, who explored brain behavior in earlier books such as Nurture Shock. And to say more about what they've discovered this time, for your ears only, Ashley Merriman is on the line now. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me. So is winning at least as much about brain power, mental attitude as muscle power or the reflexes that tie the two together? Oh, absolutely. In fact, before I started writing this book, I thought psychology and physiology, I mean, there was some overlap, but I thought they were separate. And the research actually says that they're not. In fact, psychological changes and psychological states change the underlying physiology, and the physiology changes the psychology. So absolutely, competition is about mental preparation just as much as it is about any level of physicality. Well, the teases in your press release are so provocative that it makes sense to start by asking about some of them. Talk about testosterone and the neuroscience of mistakes. Is that the single chemical that can predict a winner even before an event begins? Yes, testosterone does. But what's amazing is that testosterone, you know, I think we all have this idea that testosterone is about aggression. And the research says there's no correlation between aggression and testosterone. Testosterone is the hormone of motivation. When people say, oh, I'm really fired up for this, whether it's a physical contest or a meeting, that's testosterone. And researchers by measuring testosterone levels, can figure out who's going to win not just boxing, but a chess match, or who's going to score highest on a college science exam based on testosterone before the contest even began. Because that's that body being ready for the challenge, ready for the task to go forward. And the psychological reality of home field advantage in sport, deal-making, even diplomacy. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think everybody knows, you know, home field advantage in sports. And, you know, the NBA home team wins about 63% of the time. But what's amazing here is that it's not just I have this, it's not the support of the crowd, it's not the reps are biased, it's this is mine and not yours. And that is almost an instantaneous change. If I get to a video game destination 20 seconds before you do, I'm more likely to win. But it also takes place in a business negotiation. Well, I tell people get a you know get a you know ask for a raise in your office, not your boss's, because the person with home field advantage gets 160 percent more from the negotiation. What did you find is really required for effective teamwork and how discord can be better than harmony? Well, everybody talks about the team player, right? But a team player is about someone who's agreeable and doesn't rock the boat, and they're more interested in maintaining the relationship than they are getting the job done. And the research, actually, Richard Hackman, a researcher at Harvard, studied world-class orchestras and found that the better you were on stage, the more discord was off stage because people were arguing about how to do something, how to fight, how to get recognition. And if they were just trying to play nice, it actually backfired. And most people think that performance in a team setting is driven by the relationships but actually the relationships are really driven by the performance. If I come into your team and say, I'm not happy with how this is turning out, everybody starts arguing. If a boss comes in and says, wow, this is really great, 
everybody says, well, you know, we got along so well, even though research says that they may have been arguing the entire time. And in replaying events in one's mind, why is it more valuable to focus on what didn't happen than what did? Well, the researchers talk about additive versus subtractive thinking. Subtractive thinking is, oh, I missed the meeting because I didn't get there on time. If I'd only gotten there on time, I would have done really well. So the one thing in the world that did happen, your only thing is, gee, I wish I could you know, have a time machine and change it. The better thing to do is to say, oh, if I had set five different alarms on my phone, I would have gotten to the meeting on time. If I had thought of different routes to get there, I would have gotten to the meeting on time. So now you're adding different options, and that's going to then help you the next time you have to get someplace on time. Talk about uh, the big difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. It's important to know these are not just sports metaphors. I know we'll hear them all this weekend with Final Four, but... Playing to win is actually an approach where you're focused on the good outcome, and playing not to lose is about preventing the disaster. And if you're playing to win, then you want to focus on the big picture. You want praise on what you're doing right, because you want to keep a successful strategy to win. But someone who's playing not to lose wants to hear about mistakes. They want to hear what did they do wrong so they can fix it. They don't want to hear the big picture. They don't want to hear about praise. They want to know about mastering details to get everything right. And I think so it really I also, changes everything. I think I also read that playing to win means taking more risks, and playing not to lose is a more cautious, uh, by definition, defensive game. Absolutely, because playing to win is saying, well, this is so great how could I possibly miss this opportunity? And I have confidence in what I'm doing. And again, not worrying about details, which gives me the courage to take a risk. Whereas playing not to lose is all about the disaster risks would take. So there you're trying to avoid them. And that's why you're looking for all of those things. Ashley Merriman is co-author with Poe Bronson of Top Dog, The Science of Winning and Losing, a new paperback and ebook from 12 publishers. Quote from the news, thrilled to return to the ballpark this season. That was Liz Feld, president of Autism Speaks, after Major League Baseball launched home game events to raise awareness of the condition now affecting one in 68 children, up 78 percent over five years. Next, Tunes of Tennessee, Williams, that is, from his plays for your ears only. 